If you're a gamer, this is huge. It's already bad, but it's getting worse. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sounds like just another Monday, honestly. Today, we've got to talk about, honestly, a pretty spooky thing that's getting worse. So as you know, right, there's spooky massive companies that are upstream of so much of what we do. And the situation is they're in upstream sounds scary. Bloody dire straits. Twitch has kicked off a massive layoff wave. Unity, another massive layoff wave. Discord, yeah, Discord. Just before I sat down to record today's video intro, they announced 170 layoffs. Bro, who cares? I, uh, we talk about these layoffs so much. Uh, uh, how many times can I go, uh, go here and say, it's actually good that they're making these layoffs. They're trimming the fat, the people that don't matter, the people that literally get paid for nothing. You shouldn't even feel sad about these people. Discord and Twitch, by the way, aren't profitable. So, guys, this is actually kind of dire. Yeah, Discord and Twitch aren't profitable. They're just big, okay? This is what a lot of companies do. By the way, most of the cool, oh wow, this is the future companies are not profitable. And they're not profitable for more than five years now. Tr trust me, you probably know at least 10 companies that are big in your country and they're not profitable. But they're somehow afloat because they have this amazing hype because you see they're the next big thing. They have so many people using it, okay? And that's the, and that's the, that's the key thing here, right? If you have a lot of people using it, well, the difference between non-profitability and profitability is just finding a way to generate profit. Super simple, even a toddler could figure this one out, right? So that's why everyone's so hyped about this. But the reality is making something profitable is literally synonymous with the phrase adding shit that people don't like. It's true. One of the greatest examples for gamers is probably going to be Skype. Yeah, remember the golden days of using Skype and whatnot? Yeah, it was good. Until they started to need to make it profitable because Microsoft bought it and then it turned to shit. And you know what happened? Discord happened. Yeah, yeah. And do you know what's now happening to Discord? That's right. Discord's trying to make itself profitable. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Discord will fail. It's not going to be profitable. I literally tell people in my Discord constantly, do not do the Nitro thing. It's stupid. It's useless. Whatever. Okay? It, it's just dumb. It's just dumb. And furthermore, to monetize a Discord, do you know how stupid the rules are for Discord monetization? My Discord is actually, actually monetiza uh, monetizable. But I can't. Because one of my sections is called funny shit. Yeah, if you just have shit in the topic names anywhere, you can't monetize it. It is what it is. And I'm gonna keep it that way. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make Discord money while they give me pennies. No. I'll just wait until Discord dies and the new Skype appears. Or whatever is gonna follow after Discord. And then we're all just gonna switch to that and forget Discord exists. This is the game. The Game of Thrones, but in business. And unlike in years past where layoffs would happen in this environment of low interest rates and all this pandemic driven digital growth, where of course employees could maybe move to another company or perhaps start their own company because finance was out there. Well, we're not in that situation. Fortunes are not so bright. So let's tackle this bubble burst thing and to protect our bubble, today's sponsor. If you're here, that means you're curious, so I've got something for you. It's brilliant.org forward slash wow. news. The best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. And today, we'll be under... Bam. ...on estimated 10,500 layoffs within gaming, right? And the top five were Unity, ByteDance, Embracer Group, Epic Games, and Amazon. And there was really nothing good about any of this. In so many cases, right, this was staff who were confidently given roles. The problem is those roles were based on predictions of future revenue, right? And there's the problem. A lot of that was big, pumped up pandemic era investments that obviously was a bubble. Yep, that is completely accurate. And you know why? No one predicted that this bubble is, well, everyone predicted that this bubble is gonna burst because this is how companies work. It doesn't matter if you're finance. It doesn't matter who you are. 
if you're if you're making the big bucks in the age of the pandemic for a year okay you you that one year that's that, that that's a little bit different okay that means that the next year you you can actually make the prediction slightly less than that because you think it's gonna go down but when it's two years in a row you're making the big moolah Bruh, you cannot scale down from that. It is literally impossible. This is something that literally every single big company that is on the stock market or is a government institution for that matter even cannot do. If you have two or uh, two successive years of growth, you cannot lock in, oh, we're going to make less money now. That is not a thing. You can only lock in further growth. And that, and that's when everyone gets hurt because you know people, uh, people, uh, people hire new stuff, they make new stuff. You know, essentially, completely useless investment. It is crazy how absolutely susceptible the business world is to this concept. It's funny, also, but it is what it is. Bubble, and that bubble has somewhat popped, and that has hurt a lot a lot of people now the claim that we keep on hearing is layoffs are necessary they're required they in order to shore up company finances and yes. to not have problems later on yes and in many cases i actually do think that's true the problem is it's they true in all cases without exception grew irresponsibly and all of this is why 2024 has started with the number five contender amazon laying off a further 35 percent of their staff at twitch Good. Yeah, 35%. I mean, oh Good. Again, the golden example of this is Twitter. Elon Musk takes over Twitter. What does he do? He fired more than 80% of the staff there. And what's happening? Well, Twitter's doing amazingly. That's what's happening. Uh, you know, if you... The, and also, again, this just shows you how comical the finance world is. Uh, time and time and time again... All of all all of these all all of these big things, big journals, Forbes. Well, Forbes is a joke. If you know, if you follow this channel, that you know that Forbes is an absolute joke. But you know, all these classical things that people think that matter and have actual impact, like Forbes, for example, they constantly come out with articles saying, "Oh, Elon Musk took over Twitter, and now it's now it's worth only one fourth of what it was previously." Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. More user growth up. Time spent on Twitter per uh, per average user up. Hype up. People, uh, the quality is up. Literally, all the competitors that have uh, arisen have been literally totally deleted and yeeted out of existence. Uh, threads or whatever Zuckerberg's t uh, situation was. And there you have all of the all of these uh, all of these places saying, "Oh, Twitter's worth one fourth of what it was. It, now it's profitable. It's better, more users, but now it's worth less." You see how sometimes the financial world world is an absolute just joke. It is what it is. All of these companies can probably fire fifty percent of their staff without problems. Because again, what, what do you think the people that got fired uh, in Twitch do? They're probably some kind of niche community managers or some kind of shit like that for, like, I don't know, uh, two view streamers that never even interact with them or some crap like that. That's who they fired. It's people who don't actually provide value to the company. Oh my god, that is absolutely brutal. Then next, the number one uh, winner of 2023, uh, Unity, is laying off a quarter of their staff. A quarter. Remember, they were already number one for the most layoffs, and now another quarter are gone. It's kind of crazy. Unfortunately, it's not just those two companies, though. Slipgate Ironworks... Unity is a little bit different because their situation is actually slightly worse. Works and embracer groups. No, too. it's not slightly worse. Unity's situation is actually way worse because you know Unity's a game developing engine, and well, Unreal Five. 
So you know that's that's kind of big. There there is not a lot uh, there is not a lot of belief in Unity currently in general. But that has nothing to do with the layoffs, nothing to do with their new monetization practices that they try to implement. Nothing of that. There's just not a lot of belief in Unity that they're going to be successful in the future with the things that they do. Studio it is also losing staff, as is a VR studio. Another fascinating thing that's happening, though, is there's actually finally some changes in the Unity board. People are leaving, and to be honest with you, while it's a little bit conspiratorial, I almost think it's good the people who are leaving the board. More on that later, let's talk about Twitch first. I'm going to stop in with the CEO, Dan Clancy, who has announced they're laying off more staff. Now, in March of 2023, Twitch laid off 400 people. They then laid off more people in October. By the way, you know what I love about that old grandpa, Dan Clancy, or whatever his name is? It's the fact that people are actually buying it, uh, buying the idea that he's, oh, he's the good guy, he's, he's Gandalf, he's, he's Magneto, he's the cool uncle type of character. Bruh, that guy's brutal. That guy is absolutely, you don't get to become a CEO of a company with a thousand plus employees or whatever, or ver worth more than, uh, you know, multiple millions. And Twitch is way bigger than multiple millions. I'm just uh, making a baseline here. And being the good guy, okay? Hey, your CEO can actually be a nice dude, but I can guarantee you that uh, on average, no company with a nice dude CEO ever breaks, uh, you know, a million in value or something like that. They're just small companies and that's pretty much it. So, Gandalf the Grey or whatever the, uh, that guy's name is from Twitch, bro, that guy is a cold ass mf -er, okay? He, he's gonna fire these people and he's gonna destroy everything. He just knows how to act. It's as simple as that. October, and that was following a few different moves in their business. One example of that is they left the Korean market. Basically, their like their margins were narrowing. I believe there's other streaming providers in Korea and just a few other things. So they got out of Korea and now they're laying off 500 staff. Now remember, whenever I say that they're laying off 35%, that is 35% of what they have now post all of the other layoffs. So certainly Good. you've you've got to say think about the company Twitter. X, as I suppose they now want us to call it, where it had, what, like 10,000, 8,000, 7,000 developers? Uh, or not developers, but, you know, staff. And I think anybody with a working brain just would think, what? Oh, you need nearly 10,000 people to do Twitter, which does seem a little bit insane. Now, Twitter was cut to the bone under its new management, right? And when you think about that, actually, Twitter was almost certainly, I mean, in the industry, it was regarded as being a very fat company with extremely low productivity and a lot of executives a lot of boards have kind of the, the, oh yeah the productivity of twitter Be, before elon musk took over twitter implemented what was the statistic it was crazy 0 0.1 changes per year elon <laughs> elon musk had elon musk is implementing what like three to five changes a year at this point probably more i don't even know dude it is what it is I looked at that and thought, hang on a second. Yes, they got bad PR, blah, 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 blah. But Twitter hasn't fallen over. Now, if Twitter was still able to hold on to its advertisers, uh, you know, hi, Bob, and etc. If it was still able to hold on to its advertisers with those significantly reduced uh, employee, like, you know, headcount costs, you could maybe see Twitter actually being in, uh, in, in a state of profitability. Thing is, though, they did lose. Twitter was close to profitability, how long ago? Was it six months or something like that? Twitter was on the verge of profitability. Uh, by the way, Elon Musk sued uh, the Anti-Defamation anti League because, you know, they're literally, you know, I, I mean, pick any theory about the, the Anti-Defamation League and there you have it. They, they literally went on a crusade against him and now he's suing them, which is pretty fine and good lose loads of their revenue and uh, manage to take a great many losses. So I think that side, no boards will be learning lessons there, but they will be looking at the fundamental of it was cut to the bone, the core service is still there, and at least, you know, it's it's probably bigger than Threads or Blue Sky or whatever. And we're just seeing this across- What is Blue Sky? Probably bigger, bruh. Twitter has been growing <laughs> since Elon Musk took over. It's actually fantastic. It's pretty crazy. 
And also one of the craziest things about Twitter is I started using Twitter more actively, like, you know, a little bit, like five minutes a day. Well, I'm still actually at those five or ten minutes a day of, of Twitter usage. But before Elon Musk took over, man, Twitter is... Everything there was probably corrupt and rigged. Let's, let's be completely real. Well, we already know that from the emails between government and Twitter uh, that were leaked. But, man... Remember before Elon Musk took over every single day, every single day I logged in there and I saw, guess what, that's right, Trump is trending, Six, 3 million tweets, 2 million tweets about Trump or whatnot, Elon Musk took, uh, takes over and you know what happens, it vanishes, strange isn't it, huh, wow, really strange how that happens. And now Trump trends only, you know, time to time, not every single literal day. Crazy, huh? What's the industry? So then, allegedly, Twitch will be operating their global business with less than 1,000 staff. And the reason why is pretty simple. Here's just the quote from Dan. Unfortunately, despite these efforts, it's become clear our organization is still meaningfully larger than it needs to be given the size of our business. Last year, we paid out over a billion dollars to streamers. Okay, awesome for the streamers. The core point there, though, is the basic unit economics do not add up. Now, there's lots of different types of businesses, right? Yeah, I have no idea what he means, even means by the words basic unit economics. As an example, the business that we run here between the game studio and, you know, this, right, YouTube, it's a bootstrapped, you know, cash flow generating business that's not taking on like equity investment or anything like that. So whenever I'm trying to grow the company, it's literally how can I sustainably make the line go up so that I can put more of that money into higher wages for our team or maybe into doing some cool new things? And that's it. What I'm able to do is so directly tied to our cash flow. However, when you turn Makes into sense, a big yes. sort of growth kind of company, it moves away from that and then it moves into bets being placed, bets on future growth. And what happened during the pandemic is everybody flocked online. As an example, if you... Uh, true, but small businesses also bet on future growth. If you don't bet on future growth as a small company, that means you're literally blind to your incomes. Which he blatantly is... Okay, so he's right that big companies do this, but this is not some kind of monumental thing. This is commonplace in practice. So, yeah, the emphasis here is it's it's common knowledge, not not really anything special. Look purely at sales, you would think that Shadowlands is the best expansion that World of Warcraft ever had because it was the fastest selling one. Of course, World of Warcraft is an MMORPG and Shadowlands launched in the pandemic. So even though it had these massive sales, the game actually Dude, Blizzard actually blamed the pandemic for bad numbers. They were one of the few companies that blamed the pandemic for bad numbers, you know. Every retail store is blamed the pandemic for bad numbers because people literally did not go out of the house as much, right? Blizzard, while well, every other, by the way, gaming company was uh, saying, "Oh, this is this is record-breaking years of sales, of activity, of everything," Blizzard was like, "Bad, bad, yeah," because this Shadowlands was Blizzard's lowest point in history so far actually went into a deeply unhealthy state very rapidly after its launch. If you were to make bets based on looking at Shadowlands and thinking line go up, you would be sorely disappointed. And that has happened across industries. Now, of course, what that's meant for Twitch is they're trying to do more obtrusive things to earn revenue. More advertisements are played. There's the whole streamer bounty system that we've talked about ad nauseum last year. And fundamentally, they have a problem where if you're a really big streamer, right, you can do a deal that is, say, worth 100 grand to promote a game. And I know those are eye-watering numbers, but that's what the really big streamers can do. Twitch makes none of that. If Probably it was 30, more. Twitch would make 30 grand. That would be a decently meaningful amount of money to them. So overall... Well, Twitch did implement the bounty system and whatnot to actually combat it. Uh, the, true, the true big problem here is the fact that most streamers 
understand that they need to improve the quality of their stream and whatnot to make it a better experience for people to watch. Because statistically, this is uh, it's proven. It's like, hey, the moment you uh, the moment you put uh, put an ad on, congratulations, people are leaving. It is what it is. Again, um, or if you take like a ten minute break or something like that, the moment you do that, that's it. GG, no re for uh, re for that stream. People are gonna leave and they're never gonna come back. So big streamers kind of understand it. That uh, well, running ads is bad. But Twitch likes that you're running ads because that makes them money. But streamers don't want to run ads. This this is the whole thing why uh, why the thing with the ads was made. Well, the, why, how they're trying to actually change all of that stuff. It's pretty crazy. Because again, the the bigger you are as a personality, the less you actually want to play by Twitch's rules. Because you have so many external revenue sources. Twitch made you big, but you no longer need Twitch. So you're doing things that are actually harmful to Twitch while still being on Twitch and you know all of that stuff. Um, this is the uh, this is the uh, this is the reason I also believe. Not too long ago, there was this uh, I saw this post tweet or whatever it was about Twitch just flat out saying they don't care about personalities, which is true, which is smart, because. You can't, there's no point in fighting over the personalities for Twitch, the platform where all the people are already on. There's no point, you know? You paying all of 100, uh, because this is going to happen. We already know that this is true from Twitter, uh, TikTok, and well, pr Instagram, and pretty much any other platform that has ever appeared or existed. If you ban all the people who are the most popular, if Twitch just overnight decided to completely b ban blacklist all of their 100, uh, 100 most uh, viewed streamers, you know what would happen in a day or two? There would be new people replacing them. Because those people would not go away. The majority of that audience would just not randomly go away. They, they would still be dead and still using Twitch. Now, admittedly, Twitch would never be, do this, but this is the example of how these things happen. This is why Kick is doing these million-dollar deals with people who can get audience into Kick. Because that's valuable, but for Twitch, these deals are not valuable. Like, they, they ban Dr. Disrespect. And my theory about Dr. Disrespect being uh, deleted is still the fact that he overplayed his hand and he said, yeah, I need this much money and that was way more than Twitch was willing to give up for their deal with him. And considering uh, Ninja got deleted just before that and well, thrown into absolute irrelevancy by switching platforms, they were not afraid of losing Dr. Disrespect. And that's true. I mean... Dr. Disrespect went away and his stream has been stagnant on, on YouTube. It's still in a good position and whatnot, but it's pretty stagnant. The estimations for, from what he grown, uh, grew from uh, tw YouTube is, you know, this big. But if he stayed on Twitch, it would be this big. So, it is what it is. They haven't been able to raise their monetization as they would like. The company literally has bad unit economics. And clearly, rather than weather that storm, Amazon just don't want to continue hemorrhaging money. To manage this then, Dan Clancy is doing a stream. Overall, basically, it's a spooky situation. If you're viewing Twitch, look, I don't think anything's really going to, like, go anywhere soon. I think what will be a challenge here, though, is the continued feature development of Twitch. Maybe if they're choosing to get rid of some of those more highly paid engineers. And then of course, if you are a streamer, well, I imagine Twitch support staff are not going to be having a great time right now. So overall, that is that story. Next though, we've got to go into the situation with Unity. As if all of their layoffs was not enough, they have framed the new wave of layoffs as a company reset and 1,800 people are being let go. 
And per the reporting that Reuters has done, this is not the end because a spokesperson actually confirmed to them that uh, no, no, there's going to be there's going to be further changes in the future. So again, I mean, if you're working at Unity, that is going to be a really spooky situation. What's notable though is uh, well, a bit of a bit of a statement they've made. I'll just read it out for you. We are reducing the number of things we do in order to focus on our core business and drive our long-term success and profitability. I think that is basically a statement that many of us would find to be agreeable. I sort of I want to talk a little bit about uh, what many would sort of loosely call enshittification. You know the way you get a tool and you like the tool and then the company making the tool to increase their monetization just starts putting more bells and whistles on it and as the tool technically does more things its core use case like the reason why you actually like using it just gets worse because it was deeply enshittified. As an example, I would say the Windows operating system, as you move from like Windows 7 to 8 to 9 to 10, a lot of enshittification happened. And Windows 10 was basically Microsoft trying to reduce the enshittification that they uh, sort of implemented with Windows. Oh, I think this is a false equivalency. Microsoft stopped uh, upgrading things because they understood that there's no point in upgrading things. At a certain point, your product is good enough. And now it's just time to, you know, do the Call of Duty thing and really, really, really is the same thing over and over and over and over again. Microsoft just, with Windows updating, literally understood that. Yeah, that there is a point where you need to stop crea uh, trying to make new things. Because Microsoft tried to add new things to Windows that work and do stuff. Yeah, uh, stupid idea when you're implementing things that no one likes just for the sake of implementation and change. Not good. And they stopped it. So this is slightly different. It was 8 and 8.1. Now with Unity, they basically thought, right, we have this video game business, but architectural visualization, virtual production, all of the other things that a game engine actually could be useful for in various industries. For Unity, that would always be kind of hard because Epic with Unreal Engine, they are, they're just the default when it comes to virtual production. And when I say virtual production, just think, you know, Think of green screens in films, but instead of green screens, it's way more advanced and cool and, uh, and and super modern. It's basically how Mandalorian and the Netflix show 1899 plus many others have been filmed. So Epic's there. Uh, it seems that Unity just... No, that's not a good thing because the Mandalorian became shit. Really did not get penetration into that market. So basically, they're getting rid of a whole bunch of stuff so that they can refocus on being a game engine company which is something that I would agree with. The thing here that's a challenge is, based on their old plan, many people had jobs, and based on their new plan, which I think most people within games probably basically agree with, or, okay, not necessarily agree with, but if you're a game developer, do you want Unity to be a game engine company, or do you want it to be a game engine company that actually does many other things with the goal of game engine stuff, video games basically being a side piece? compared to the more profitable industries, big enterprise things they could do. I mean, you would prefer that Unity, the game engine, is focused on being a game engine, but that old plan led to a massively bloated company that has now been cut to pieces, and this is basically just how, um, well, morons, I, I suppose, make stupid decisions in boardrooms. I, I mean, I don't know, it, it just seems... In Anyone who thinks that the people in boardrooms are morons, <laughs> there's a reason you work in McDonald's, okay? The majority of bosses are not stupid. They're way smarter than you think. They are way smarter than you think. Insane. Now, this is in line with other things we've seen from the company. Of course, we recently covered the story with Weta Digital. The core there, of course, so Weta, they're that VF. Essentially, the problem with his argument here is uh, to boil it down to most uh, the most basic and understandable level, he is saying, oh, Unity was doing a thing, but then they decided to do more things, and that's stupid. Why would you do more things if you already did one thing that was good? He's essentially saying, hey, never, in, ne never expand, never develop, never do anything, which is the stupidest thing ever, okay? That for every... Okay, let me... Uh, uh, let me give you another example. For everything that Microsoft fails, like the Stadia thing, Microsoft will gain so much more with just one success. For every 10, 20, 30 fails that Microsoft does, considering they can do most of those things in-house and they don't need external uh, help with a lot of things, one thing out of 30 succeeding is going to pay for everything else. And Microsoft's already printing money. So... 
for companies that have the resources, the capabilities to expand and do things that they could be successful at, is stupid to not try. So the idea that he's saying, hey, you already is, is just, is just, what's the word I'm looking for here? Hmm. Uh, this, uh, the most inept thing ever. Like, this, this, this is such an unbelievably bad take. He should not be allowed to even look at money because he's probably going to burn it uh, so magically how. It, it's, it's incredibly stupid and bad to say this. Find with other things we've seen from the company. Of course, we recently covered the story with Weta Digital. The core there, of course, so Weta, they're that VFX group in New Zealand. Uh, of course, you'll know them from things like Lord of the Rings. Basically, the like people doing the work, they are still Weta. Uh, they're, they're still there, right? And they're owned by Peter Jackson. But the tech side of them that was making the tools, they got acquired by Unity, with the then being an agreement that, of course, Weta continues using those tools. And now Unity basically has retained all those tools. You know what I love about the Iron, uh, Iron Man? Essentially, uh, this. Fired by so, look at this. So, you have two Iron Man suits, right? One is clearly better at other things than the other, but the other doesn't use the things that are better from the other one. It's like, it makes no sense that there's two different Iron Man suits if you're supposed, uh, if they're in battle. Because they're not exactly like flexible as in, oh, this is Iron Man's suit when he wants to go uh, ice skiing. Oh, this is Iron Man's suit when he wants to go fly fishing. You know, it's, it's not that different. These are both uh, basic, basic, the best suits and they're meant for combat. And they're different. They're fundamentally completely different for no reason. I always love that about uh, uh, Iron Man. It just makes no fucking sense. Unity, with the then being an agreement that, of course, Weta continues using those tools. And now Unity basically has retained all those tools and killed uh, the, the bit of Weta that they purchased for like one point something billion. So that's awesome. Uh, as we go on then, these are basically just, uh, rather than being specific, these are vast and sweeping effects. Uh, this is also a pretty dumb take, honestly. So, there are situations where companies buy other companies and then everyone's like, Oh my god, they bought this company and they killed it in an instant. Can we imagine an uh, example where that would be good? How about Microsoft buying Bethesda? Yeah. It would be pretty actually smart of Microsoft to just kill Bethesda off now that they have acquired it and redisperse what they have from Bethesda in themselves and in other places that they want to. So sometimes companies acquire other companies and that company that got acquired seemingly dies. But that's not true. Chances are the company was acquired because of a specific thing, not because of itself. Because that company want, uh, because the bigger company wanted something. It is, the, it, it is what it is. They just acquire the company, take the stuff that they want, implement it in their uh, big company, and you know, then take the talent, all of those people, and you know, put them in good, better places. And then that company is kind of defunct, or you know, doing some super minor stuff for just the brand recognition or whatever. It is what it is. These are basically just, uh, rather than being specific, these are vast and sweeping, affecting all teams, regions, and areas of the business. Now, if you care about Unity just as a games engine, this is still a concerning thing because the game engine business is also getting smaller. Again, you could hope that actually some goddamn mission focus from this company would mean that they're more like efficient at doing the game engine bit. Now there is another side to this, and this is one that I think is actually good news. So a SEC filing was made, and this is detailing another set of personnel changes, in this case, the board. So six founders of Iron Source, okay, are leaving their roles uh, in Unity over the next six months. One is leaving his role internally, but remaining on the board of directors. Now you probably see that and think, Michael, what the hell are you on about? Who's Iron Source? Okay. Iron Source were an app monetization company that merged with Unity. And a lot of people started to sleuth about. And essentially the, uh, was it like the, the VC company or whatever, the holding company, the people who owned Iron Source, loads, like a bunch of them kind of ended up on the board of Unity. 
and a lot of people as you do yes we're kind of suspicious about all of this and uh well you could maybe see with unity going away from being an everything company to trying to be a game engine company and a bunch of iron source people seemingly leaving i mean maybe that is a good thing as they say shit flows downstream so changes in the board okay i'm done with bad bad takes Anyway, this was Kuzer said, send takes for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and have a nice day. Bye bye.